the mixer brush tool is one of the most important tools for retouchers and photographers. So I was scrolling through Facebook and I realized most of the pictures I saw were looking too flat and too smooth. I'm going to show you a few ways you can fix that. Let's jump into Photoshop right now. Now that we're in Photoshop, the first reason why our image looks too flat or too smooth after we finish retouching it is because of the frequency separation Gaussian blur radius that we use to retouch the image. If you use a small frequency separation Gaussian blur radius, your image is going to be smooth. Why, if you use the higher frequency separation blur radius, you are going to retain more texture on your image. So I'm going to be using this image right here as an example, and also this one right here as an example. For this first image, I'm going to be using a smaller frequency separation blur radius. So let's come to my retouching academy and just click on frequency separation via Gaussian blur. And just use a frequency separation radius of 4 for this first one right here. I click on OK. Why for this other one, I'm going to be using a half frequency separation blur radius and I'm going to compare this side by side so you can see the effect. So back to this first one that I use frequency separation blur radius of 4. I'm just going to pick my mixer brush tool, hide my head so layer, and just use my mixer brush to paint on the image. So you can see the effect if you use a smaller frequency separation blur radius on your image. So I'm going to paint on this image right here. I'm going to be fast about it. Okay, let me show you the before. So you can see how smooth this image is looking right now. This is the before and this is the after. The before and the after, you can see how smooth it's looking because we use a smaller blur radius. Why for this other one right here, I'm going to use a frequency separation blur radius of 10 to retouch this image and I'll place it side by side so you can see the before and after. So I'll just use 10 for this image right here. And just hide my high texture layer, pick my mixer brush tool and just paint on the image like this. Now let's see the before and after. This is the before. And this is after so i'm going to place them side by side so you can see the difference so i'll just come to my windows arrange to up vertical okay i'm just going to zoom this first one right here so you can see how smooth it's looking compared to the second one and i come to the second one i'm going to zoom in and just bring it side by side so you can copy so this first one right here is the one we use a focus separation layers of four to retouch now you can see how smooth this first one is looking compared to this one. So if I just show you the before and after, you can see this is the before. You can see how it was and this is the after. You can see how smooth it is. Why for this other one right here? This is the before and this is the after. So looking at this image side by side, you can see that this first one right here is looking more smoother and more flatter than this other one that I use the higher frequency separation blur radius. So if you don't want your image to be flat, make sure you use a higher frequency separation blur radius so that you can retain more texture on your image. And your image is not going to be too smooth if you do that as well. Another mistake we make when we touch our image that makes our image look too flat or too smooth is because we brush the highlight into the shadows, or rather we brush the shadows into the highlights. Instead of doing that, just brush your shadows separately and brush your highlights separately. Let, let me show you how you can do that. For this first image right here, I'm going to be brushing the highlights into the shadows. While for this other image right here, I'm going to be brushing the highlights separately and the shadows separately. So let's come back to this first image and let's brush the shadows into the highlights so you can see how flat this image is going to look. So I just come to my mixer brush tool again and just hide my high texture layer. And this time I'm just going to brush my shadows into the highlights and the highlights into the shadows. After doing this, you are going to see that this image is going to look so flat. It's going to look flat. Okay, let's see our before and after. So, this is the before and this is the after. You can see how flat this image is looking because I brush the shadows into the highlights. So, let's see the before and after again. This is the before and this is the after. Why for this other one right here, I'm not going to brush the shadows into the highlight. I'm going to brush the highlight separately and the shadows separately so we can compare them side by side so you can see the difference. So, I'll just come to my creative tone again, hide my highlight texture layer. Pick my mixer brush tool and just paint the highlight separately and the shadows separately so you can see the effect. Okay, now let's see the before and after. This is the before and this is the after. The before and after you can see we still have the highlight, we still have the shadows, and this image is not looking flat. So let's just put it side by side with each other and see the difference. Now let's compare this side by side. I'll come to this other one and just move it to this side. Okay. Now you can see looking at these images, 
this first one right here it's looking smooth and flat you can see the highlight is no longer there the shadows are no longer there we just paint the highlights of the shadows and the shadows of the highlights that's why this image is looking flat let me show you before and after it just, this was how it was before and this is how it is right now after we paint the highlights into the shadows why for this other image right here you can see we still have the highlights you can see we still have the shadows and the meters are intact so let's see the before and after this is the before and this is the after you can see this other one that will paint the shadows and the highlights separately we still have the highlights we still have the shadows and the image is still looking as it is it's not looking flat so if you don't want your image to look flat make sure you are brushing your highlights separately and also make sure you are brushing your shadows separately there's another reason why our image look flat and smooth when using the mixer brush to brush on the image it's because we use a custard brush size we just use a big brush a small brush throughout the whole image instead of doing that you should increase and decrease your brush size according to the place you want to work on if you want to work on a small portion of your image make sure you reduce your brush size why if you want to work on a bigger portion of the image make sure you increase your brush size so let me show you the effect of that in photoshop so i'm just going to delete this one we just did i'm going to delete it and show you the effect of using a constant brush to retouch your image so i just pick my mixer brush to again add my head test layer and this time i want to use this big brush to brush on the image without decreasing or increasing it let me just use this constant brush to work on the image so you can see the effect so if i just use this particular brush size to brush on the image without increasing and decreasing it it's not going to make the image look good at all it is going to make the image flat because i'm using a custard brush to work on the image so just make sure you are increasing and decreasing your brush size according to the place you are working on so if i just show you before and after what we just did it's not going to look good so this is the before and this is the after the before and the after you can see it does not look good because we are not increasing and decreasing the brush size but if i come to this other image right here i'll just delete this one again create another new layer pick my mixer brush too and if i increase and decrease my my brush size to work on a particular portion of the image which i want to work it's going to make the image look good and to increase or decrease your brush size use the square bracket key on your keyboard to increase and decrease your brush size like that to make the image look good if you just use a bigger brush or a smaller brush image it's not going to make it look good it's better to just increase and decrease your brush size according to the portion you are working on if you don't want your image to be flat or look too smooth so let me just quickly show you the before and after of what i just did right there so this is the before and this is the after the before and the after and also if we compare it to this first one right here you are going to see the difference so this is the first one you can see how smooth it is why this is the other one you can see how good it is it's not looking flat you can see this first one right here is looking flat this other one right here is not looking flat those are the few ways you can improve on your retouching so that your image is not going to look too flat and too smooth first of all make sure you get the right frequency motion blur with yours and also make sure you are not brushing the shadows into the highlights or the highlights into the shadows and another thing you should consider make sure you are not using a custard brush size always make sure you are increasing and decreasing your brush size according to the portion of the image you are working on so if you are working on the bigger portion of the image use a bigger brush size if you are working on the smaller portion of the image use a smaller brush size and if you want to learn how to get the right frequency motion blur with yours make sure to click on this video showing right here I'll see you guys in my next video. Stay creative.